Hello and welcome to Space Shark Teaches. I'm Sean from Space Shark Studios and I'm here to teach you visual scripting in Godot 3.1. Let's get started. In this lesson, we are going to be using animated sprites to animate your character instead of using a sprite sheet. So stick around and see how to use that. So first off, we're going to go ahead and make a clone of our player. So if you hit Control D, come on now, I will make another player. And I will go ahead and swap out our old player with this one. Let's go ahead and we can rename to another player. Make sure and move another player. Whoop. Down where the other one started. And we can delete our old player. Now what we're going to be doing here is replacing Sprite with something called Animated Sprite. just like we've done before. So animated sprite. And if you remember, it says you need frames. So we're going to add frames. And this is where we're going to be adding some sprites. So I'm going to be using sprites that you can find in the description once again. I made a bunch of new individual sprites for this project. So what you're going to want to do here, because you can't drag folders in, is you want to open this folder in File Manager. And then you want to go ahead and drag this folder called Player Sprites and copy it in. Once you're done with that, you'll have this folder with all the different player sprites. Now a problem with this is you cannot mass import. I don't know why, but that doesn't seem to be a feature. So you have to go in and set each one of these to be 2D pixel by hand. And it takes a little while and it's really annoying, but at very least there aren't that many. I'm sure that someone online has written a tool to be able to help this, but to keep this simple, I have instead not that many sprites and you know we can just use this tool so moving on from that once we have gotten these in I want to bring attention to something that I haven't before and that's the fact that if you turn on the rulers you can see that we have been using 10 as our base offset. But if you look at the sprites that we have, these are base eight. So we're using 16 by 16 or two eights by two eights. So this is not working because we're going to be having the issues where things are stretching out not quite right and kind of moving around weird. Um, in order to show this off, let me go ahead and show you what the idle state looks like. So idle state, we'll set it to two. We'll turn it on. Right here it looks you know, kind of okay. And it, it looks okay, but the problem is it's because it's not stretched out. So let's stretch that out. Resize, resize our collision box. And if we press play, you see how his head gets a little bit bigger when he goes up? That line is thicker and that's because it's not actually scaling the game correctly. So what we want to do is over here next to the snap, we want to click and we want to configure snap. 
and we want to change this to 8 by 8. Now when we go here, we can snap this and this to a better size. And now when we hit play, we can see he looks exactly like what we want. Now this applies also to, of course, our platforms. So if you wanna see, now that we have all these, if we went and switched our snap to eight by eight, I'm gonna do this real quick just so you can see. Each one of these would now need to be scaled. You can see it's not really a fun thing to have to do. So we scale all these in and pull them in. And once we've done that, resize the collider. And over in main, you can see that their animations are going to look kind of not as squished as they were before. But I'm not going to do that for the rest of the platforms because that takes a long time and we're focusing on the player right now. So we have an idle state now. That's good. We also want to make moving left. And moving right. Moving left is going to use all of these and then moving right of course we'll use all of these. And then over here in sprite we can go and decide which one we want to use. Let's go ahead and set this to idle by default and he's gonna just jump up and down or kind of twerk there for a bit. And after that we are going to go ahead and make a new script. So we want to remove, actually no, we want to extend this script, I believe. Nope, we actually want to remove it. And then up in scripts, once again, we have player. We can hit Control D and make another player and duplicate that. Once we have another player, we can drag it up onto player, and there we go. We have a new player. Um, what we need to do here is actually undo a bunch of stuff, though. So we have ready. Well, we don't really need ready anymore, if I remember correctly. Um, what we need is actually to replace all of this including all of the animations per second, current frame, cycles, anything to do with the frames can now be removed. So we don't need this anymore. And animate can actually be changed. We need to get rid of, oh, this stays, this goes, and then we don't need any of this. We are going to be updating all of this logic because this part is good. So now all we have to do is say, all right, we have the animation that we're playing. So if we're moving left, we say, I want to move left. Oops, move right. Then we can click this, hit duplicate, say nope. We are actually moving left. And if we're not moving left or right, we are idle.
And for the most part, that is working. So one of the issues we have here, if you remember, we forgot to actually move over our values. So let's go ahead and move this to, let me see here. I believe these were the numbers. Well, regardless, we can just play around with these a bit. Whoa! I think gravity was a little bit off there. There we go. Good enough. Now we're moving right or left and right and we are animating for the most part. So let's try and figure out what's going on here. Moving right works, moving left works, and this might just be an issue with how these work when they're duplicated. So if our movement velocity in the x direction is greater than zero, we are moving right. If our movement is, ah, that is why. So if you see, we're not saying false here, we're saying done. What we actually need is that to be, if we're not moving left or right, check if we're moving left. If we're not moving left, we are idling. So as you can see, we are now animating correctly. So the only problem here is if we're moving left, we're turning right again when we're idling. And we can actually fix that by using this direction that we were going before. So we are going to add a new variable. We are going to call it facing right. Let's just say facing right. And this starts as a bool that is on. So now we have to say, all right, if we are facing right, or let's, let's start this right. First, we have to set it. So facing right starts out every cycle as true because that's, that's the default state of all of these animations. Once that has happened, we can go ahead and go into here. If we are moving right, we can say, yes, we are still facing right. But if we are moving left, we want to say, no, we are not facing right. And then in here, before we set animation, animated sprite has this fun little thing called flip H. And we can say, instead of false, we come into here and we say flip the horizontal direction, which means invert the way that the sprite is facing. We are going to not this because if we are not facing right, we want the flip to be true. And actually, this is wrong. What we actually want to do is drag in this flip H and make sure that it is set to false every cycle so that it resets. And it only gets set when we are idling. And there we go. We are now going left and right using animated frames that we can control via the animator here. in order to control things like speeds. So if we want moving right to run at 10 and moving left 
to be more of a moonwalk. Then left goes slow and right he's going fast. It's a lot easier to update, or I guess it was a lot easier to code, but we don't have the properties all here like we used to. So that's the only real downside of this. But that's it, you now have two different ways that you can animate your character, depending on if you wanna use a sprite sheet or make a bunch of individual sprites, and depending on if you wanna code it all yourself and have more control over it, or if you wanna use the built-in animated sprites. Um, in next lesson, like I said before, we are going to be working on moving platforms. So we'll see you then. Thank you for watching Space Shark Teaches. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel and remember to click the bell to always stay up to date. Please also join us on our Discord, linked in the comments, and check out our other videos if you ever want to see what else we've been up to. Thanks again for watching, and we can't wait to see what you make.